We are just over a week away from the Schmalz Cup Final Four taking place this year in Woodstock starting on May 12th, presented by Milk Up. We're talking to all the different head coaches of the teams that are participating. Tonight, we're chatting with the Clarington Eagles head coach, Dean Baumhauer. You are 16-0 and in these playoffs so far. What can you say about this team right now, Dean? Oh, thanks, Darren. I'm happy to be here. You know what? Um, great group of boys, um, obviously. Um, a lot, quite a few. We had a lot of first year guys last year, so quite a few of returning players this year, uh, probably a little over half. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously used to me, me used to them. Uh, we came within, you know, a shot last year. We lost in overtime to a, to a good Lake Shore team. Um, you know, on a tough day where my wife had passed away that morning. So Lakeshore was really great. She had a tough fight with cancer leading up to the, in that season. And it was just heavy heart game, but it was, a, it was a memorable game. And the boys really played hard. I'll never forget that. Um, you know, this year we had a strong season again um, in our, within our division. Um, you know, some, some good teams in our division, uh, some up and coming young, good teams, Georgina, uh, Oxbridge, um, two real good groups that you know what they, they played us hard all season and then just in the playoffs i think uh you know you got it you know you get the bounces and whatnot and just all year trying to get the kids to understand just you know the doing the right things all the time and, and pushing those buttons in order to be ready for april may hockey so um you know what we're on a great run uh we beat uh you know lakefield in four Georgina and four, Oxbridge and four to get out of our division. And really, you know, some tough games where maybe we lost our discipline, we lost our composure at times and learning from that without losing the game, we still got a valuable lesson and, you know, how you got to play 60 minutes, obviously. Um, and then moving into Port Hope, they had a real strong year after the trade deadline. They added some older guys, a couple of well-known kids from our division in uh, Kimball and uh, Flynn, both their brothers, uh, and Bridges, a junior A defenseman out of Aurora. So they and they beat a, a really good uh, and respected Napanee team. So we knew we were going to have our hands full, and we we stole game one really with two goals in the last 27 seconds to win six five in a in a game that neither coach probably enjoyed all that much, but the fans loved. Um, and then we played really well down in game two in Port Hope. Game three, I didn't think we were good at all. The third game in four days, uh, we got advantageous on a on a questionable five minute major call that we scored twice on at the end of the game to add an empty net or two. And then in the closeout game, um, you know, we knew Port Hope would be desperate, but uh, I probably think we played one of our best games of the 16 in the playoffs in the closeout game against Port Hope down there last week. So we're we're a confident group um uh, and we're a hungry group because we got so close to the to the final taste that uh you know we 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 think we're good enough to get back there but very respectful of stainer we know what they're all about great organization lakeshore obviously won it last year well coach group and uh, i don't know much about wellesley wellesley sorry but they uh um, I had heard Glambrook was a good team. <laughs> so they obviously are a good team if they took Glambrook out in five. So it's, there's going to be no easy games left now. So you, you talked a little bit about last year and you talk about getting to the final game against Lakeshore. You end up losing that three, two in overtime. Maybe a two part question here. Uh, what did it mean to you on a personal level that the guys went out there and, and left it all out on the ice, you know, given the, the trying time that you were kind of dealing with on the personal level um, on the flip side of that, you talk about the returning players. They must be super motivated and hungry. We know you're back there this year and, you know, to, to win it this time around, I'm sure would just mean the world to those kids. Right. Yeah, it would. And it, you know what? It was a tough day. It was a tough day for most of the kids. I've coached in this community a long time. So most of these kids grew up knowing my wife quite well as well. So it was a it was a tough morning when they all were told about it. And I just think we played with heavy hearts. But I'll never forget uh, how hard they competed and how, how much they cared that it was a tough day for me. And my son was on the team as well, Nate. So um, it was just a day that those boys are a special group for me that were on that team, obviously, because together we we kind of went through that fight together. It was my outlet to, to, you know, during a tough time to go to the rink. It made me feel happy there, you know what I mean? I mean so um and as far as the second part of the question um yeah like right from the get-go you set your team goals and you know we, we want to get back to to, to to woodstock we knew it was going to be in woodstock this year we also know that 
you know, it's very difficult. You got to be advantageous. You can't have the wrong guy get hurt, wrong guy get suspended in a one game sort of elimination game. But it, it's, it's very exciting at the same time. Um, I mean, I'm a fan of the four to seven series where coaches can make adjustments and you can kind of see teams. But at the same time, I think it's pretty exciting, too, that you're going up to against three other teams that you, that you know are going to be as good as anyone you've played all year. And that's what the round robin's for. You get to see everybody once, a quick little glimpse, and then you hope you can make adjustments and be ready for that Saturday semifinal game. One of the things I noticed when I was kind of just preparing to chat with you tonight, um, goal differential plus 56 which is the best of any of the four teams that are competing in Woodstock. Second thing is um, goals against 28 goals against. I'm not very good at math. That's why I get into broadcasting, but 28 goals against in 16 playoff games is, is really incredible. Uh, a, what do you attribute that to, or maybe more importantly, what's the collective identity of your team, Dean? You know, we, we pride ourselves on the net out. Um, you know, it's just, you, that's how you, I believe you win championships from the net out and, and taking a real pride in, in your own zone first. Um, you know, we have literally, we're a deep squad. We've got, um, you know, I'm fortunate that I have two strong goalies in Mark Oliver Robert and uh, Jude Radina. Both were picked up in season. Um, and both of them are, are top-notch goalies. Um, both enjoy the internal competition. Um, I've been had the luxury of more or less flip-flopping the two of them. Um, and they're both very competitive and give us a chance to win every night. So that starts with those two. And our back end is, again, I have seven defensemen um, that could play, all seven could play probably on, on the remaining, you know, three teams. Uh, one, unfortunately, doesn't play each game, but uh, we're led, I'd say, by two boys that we picked up from Junior A, uh, one from Halliburton and Ryan Hall, and then one at the Christmas time in, in uh, Cole Williamson from Lindsay Muskies. Um, we have two overagers in Brayson Kellaway and Carter Watkins, who are, are, are both big parts of our back end, and um, two O fours and Ty Harris and Nolan Matheson. Nolan Matheson has really found an offensive flair to his game. He's always played the game hard. And uh, rounding out our back ends, Jake Dupuy, who played some junior A experience as well. And he adds a real nice offensive flair from our back end. So we have a, a, a prideful group that is, you know, we take pride in the D zone, but we also like to add some offense from the back, which obviously the game has changed in that way. So it's, it's needed. So. So yeah, let's, touch on, let's yeah. touch on the forwards. Let's touch on the forwards. You know, you talk about getting nice offense from the back end, but you also got guys up front that can put the, put the puck in the Yeah, we, we, we really do. Guys, Dean? Yeah, we really do. We uh, Dawson Manning, our captain, he led our division in points. 200-foot uh, player, um, relied on so much on both sides of special teams. Um, you know, he's just such a good skater and, and vision. Uh, Brady Dara was named the MVP of our division. Um, eight game winning goals this year. Uh, big right handed winger, strong, um, has really evolved his game from, I'd say, a uh, shooter first mentality to a much better uh, vision of the ice, which been, has been a nice add to his game. Um, we the left winger on that on that line is Jordan Shaw, big 3 forward who plays heavy, intimidates, goes to the net, does all the dirty work, and we have a second line that uh, with two brothers, Connor Davies is an overager, and Mitch Davies is an 04. Mitch may be my favorite player on the team. He just could have played back in the mid 80s when I played. Tough, can score, chirping nonstop. Like I just love him. Uh, and on the on the other side is a boy we picked up from junior A, Colby Poulin, who um, really his his regular season was very good, but he's taken his playoff his playoff uh, play to another level. Great speed, great vision, and uh, has really found a nice chemistry with the two Davy brothers. And probably why we're here is the. The, the luxury that most coaches don't have is the bottom six to eight forwards. We have 14 forwards that these guys could play on every team. Uh, Hayes Bell, Adam Kloss <clears throat> are 204 forwards. Uh, both have great size, good speed, both 
both have really n matured playing for me and that they're playing heavy. They're understanding their role a lot better. Um, they, they get, they get flanked on the right side by a boy that's a returning player late in Aiken who I love, but had missed the whole season with a knee injury, small guy, but huge energy, big heart and, and hits all 130 pounds of him. He'll go right through you. And, um, our, our other guys, Owen Manarin, Nate Sterling, uh, Dale Junkin, uh, Owen Canini and Brent Gaylor, or sorry, Trent Gaylor, are just energy guys who have scored big goals for us all year. They're dependable defensively. So really, so far in the playoffs, we we roll four lines and we wear down teams that play two and a half. And that's really been our biggest, you know, the biggest reason we're here is that most coaches love to have my bottom six in their top six. <laughs> yeah, in depth and defense. Right. That's all in the depth of the defense. Like, you know, you, they're just, and they're, they're guys that take pride in their game. Like they're all, they all have games that they don't like, but very rarely does this team have two bad games in a row. So, I mean, obviously to have our record, you have to have good players and kids that are committed and compete and uh, like to be pushed and like to be coached. Um, I'm not the easiest coach to play for. You know, I'm very honest and uh, about their game at times. And I think they do enjoy my animated, uh, uh, you know, dressing room sp speeches. But I mean, at the same time, these guys, I, I admire so much that this junior C league and the PJHL is so good that most of these kids are working full time or they're going to school full time. So to still want to compete and come to the rink four nights a week, uh, you got and you know, travel, get home late, go to work in the morning or go to school. Kudos to these kids. I think that's something that's overlooked is the commitment from the players. You know, you talk about they all have full-time jobs. I know a guy in our division who drives truck all day and then yeah. ends up going to the rink. That's just the way this league is. And sure, it's about development from a hockey perspective, but it's also getting them ready for, you know, quote, real life and, and whatever may be next. And I think that's something that's really great about this league is it sure it's development on the ice, but there's so many more things that you learn, you know, as you get ready to prepare for the next chapter of your life, whatever that may be, right? hundred percent, like, you know, adversity and, and, you know, you're not always going to have a good day. You're going to, it's the next shift. It's the next period. It's the next game. And really we pride this, this organization wasn't very good when, when, when I came in here and I played for this organization. So I take pride. I live in the community. Um, new ownership came in and I came in and my whole, our, our agenda as a staff ownership group was to bring in as many local kids as we could, um, win hockey games, involve the community, sponsors, get the fans enjoying being at the rink, bring kids down to the room. Uh, but really, like I said to the kids tonight after practice, I want them to look back on this year that they won a lot of hockey games. They had a lot of fun. They met a lot of new friends and really one of the most exciting seasons of hockey they've ever had. And they won't forget it. And that's really when you're coming to the end of your hockey careers, it, you have to have fun. Like we have a riot. We have a lot of good times. We, we, you know, we, we go out together as a coaching staff and a, and a team a lot after games. And, you know, I, I'm friends with these boys. They can come to me with more than just, Hey, where should I be when the puck is dumped in the left corner? You know, I get calls about, can you, can you, uh, be a reference for me. Can you, you know, my girlfriend and I just broke up. You think, you know, I could crash at your place for the week, you know, stuff like that, that I, I admire more than anything, as far as I'd rather that than, uh, than whether they can get a puck out on the boards in November. You know what I mean? So you say that until Friday night and then that'll change. You're, yeah. Yeah. You'll see what, if you're there, you'll see what, yeah, I'm, I'm fibbing. My nose just grew. You're right. <laughs> uh, let's quickly go over schedule. So you play Wellesley in Elmira. That will be at eight 30 Friday night. The following Friday, you'll play your first game of Woodstock. That's eight o'clock. It's a rematch of last year's championship against Lakeshore. Uh, but let's talk about this Saturday, your final home game in Clarington. I've seen a little bit on your social media. You want the fans to come out. You want the minor hockey players to come out. Um, you know, what does that community mean to you? How have they supported you? And, and maybe just touch on some of your executive and your sponsors. Uh, it takes a lot of people to make a winning hockey team, and it seems like it's going pretty well in Clarington, Dean. Uh, yeah, and, and most importantly, I mean, the, the community here loves their hockey. Um, 
especially playoff time. Everybody has busy lives, but I'll tell you, like, it's it's an awesome. We have an awesome following of, of real, true, true loyal Eagle fans, and for and I love that the kids get to experience, especially this time of year. You know, eight, nine hundred people in the crowd cheering them on, and the little kids that want their pucks and their hats signed is awesome. Um, ownership group Kirk Kemp uh, is uh, you know a local business owner in town here. He's been outstanding as far as support and giving us what we need to have a successful franchise. Um, great with the players, uh, respects what they do, and the players respect him back, obviously. We have a great executive and volunteer group um, that uh, help out on game days. Um, it's, uh, we have a, a special Eagle fans that come out that uh, special need uh, kids that uh, makes signs up all around the rink. And uh, it's led by our social media director, Chris Archer, that brings all these people out and they love getting to the rink. The same thing, it's a night out for them. They love being around the players, visiting the room. Uh, and just the young uh, minor hockey community here, the Clarington Flame Girls, the Clarington Toro Boys. Um, when you're, you know, little, before your minor midget year and, and whatnot, where you think you're going to the NHL, when they started as little kids, they want to be Clarendon Eagles. So it's so important that we stress to the players that how respectful you have to be to the young fans. And, and remember, on and off the ice, you represent the Clarendon Eagles. And I think the biggest thing that makes our owner, Kirk Kemp, proud, and myself as well, is just how well behaved respect that these players are in the community as far as helping out whether it's handing you know giving out christmas trees at christmas time for the rotary club we sponsor a couple families over christmas uh going in the santa claus parade uh there's a lot more to being a clarington eagle than just putting on your skates and the players have full buy-in and they love that stuff just as much they love being asked for an autograph let's face it those days are built they don't last forever nobody's asking for the coach's autograph so the players love every second of it <laughs> uh, you guys are the East Division champions, the East Conference champions, the Or Division champions are getting ready for Friday night. Look forward to meeting you in person, Dean. Really appreciate the time and uh, should be a great couple of weeks here. We've got some exciting hockey coming up. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be great hockey to watch and I hope the fans and all the buildings enjoy it and I sure appreciate your time, Darren. Thank you very much.